What's going on you guys, my name is Jake and today I'm bringing you another tech video for you avid gamers out there or I should be more specific PC gamers out there that know quite a lot about components and stuff and basically know what overclocking means if you don't know what overclocking means you shouldn't even be here right now don't, don't even, but you don't belong here, okay? Go, get out. Get out. Basically, this video is going to be revolving around what cheap graphics cards, as I'm going to preface it with, this is for cheap. If you have a very expensive system, wanting to something like a GTX 760 or more, or in fact, mm, a GTX 780 or more, or 770, when that comes out. I don't think that's out yet. I don't know. This video will be revolving around this. This is a PMY GeForce GT9500 graphics card. And you might be wondering, Jake, what the hell are you doing with that? That's ancient. Can't even buy it new anymore. You have to go on eBay and buy it for about 20, 20 pounds. That's about, off the top of my head, I think that's about 30 or $35. I'm asking the question, is it worth it to buy a really cheap physics in it, NVIDIA Physics enable graphics card and dedicate it to physics and does it have any kind of difference in physics games and applications and is the difference worth this 25 about 20 to 25 pound investment I'm gonna pre-taste this with the specs of my computer I would class it as a very low grade gaming computer I have a uh, my oh, my CPU is a Intel Core i5 2400, not K, it's not unlocked, uh, 3.4 gigahertz I believe, slightly overclocked but it can't go past 3.4 gigahertz. So I've got it clocked at 3.4 gigahertz, I've also got the, uh, this, my graphics card, the NVIDIA GeForce GTS 450, really old, can't buy it anymore, I think it was £100 when I bought it and if it was still on sale now it would probably be about 40 50 maybe uh, It's really it's all right for the money. I mean I get About 60 frames per second in Battlefield 3 if I put the settings right I get about 50 with the settings I use Just put that there And yeah, I decided to put I have this in my computer all the time And I also decided to put this in as a physics dedicated card but you don't want to hear me talk about it anymore, you want to hear the specs. So here they are, let's go look at the specs. So yeah, if you can hear sniffling in the background, my girlfriend's ill, so I don't complain about it, shut the fuck up. Or you can just click off the video, I don't care. Uh, the benchmark I'm using is Physx Fluid Mark, because it's free, and it tests Physx. There's not really much else to say about it. Uh, I didn't really go over the specs before. Uh, well, in detail, I have an Intel Core i5 2400. CPU at 3.4 gigahertz. I have a NVIDIA GTS 450 overclocked very slightly, not very much. Uh, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 1333 megahertz RAM, and that's about it of any importance, really. So, yeah, I first recorded the, ben uh, the benchmarks for uh, just the GTS 450 that I have slightly overclocked, and then swapped out a USB expansion card, put in the uh, GT9500 which you can see me doing on screen right now and uh, I thought this is a time where I should tell you how you can actually dedicate something to physics because a lot of people might not know first you have to go to your control panel or down to your system tray open it up right click on the logo NVIDIA control panel open it then you have to at the top left you'll see uh, 3D settings or something like that yeah 3D settings are set and you have to click on set physics configuration and then it says select physics processor, open up the drop down, select GeForce N 9500 GT or whatever you're dedicating to physics. I think automatically it's on auto select or CPU if your graphics card doesn't support physics. And then you just click apply. That's all you have to do and it's it's dedicated. And then I run the benchmarks again. I run the benchmarks first and then I overclocked it. The GT9500 that is. And the, the results were quite surprising as you'll see in a second. So what did the benchmarks look like? I've got them up here on my phone. Uh, first I tested it with just my GTS 450, like without the um, without the dedicated physics card. 
And in my uh, the fluid mark bench mark, the score I got was 1,587 points and an FPS of 26. Uh, I ran them all at the same settings, 720p, with the same duration. Uh, got a minimum of 26, max of 28. So not bad, not fantastic. Next, I tested it with just the, the, the dedicated physics card. Well, not just the dedicated physics card, the GTS 50 and the dedicated physics card. That scored 1650 points, well, six, more exactly 1649 points, with an FPS of 27, uh, minimum 27, max 29. So it gained 1 points per second, minimum and maximum and average. So again, it's a slight performance boost. Uh, if you've got a really low graph card, that's what I mean, like lower than even mine, uh, you're going to see it, a difference, but, I mean, right now it doesn't really, it's, it's not so fucking very good. Next we go to the benchmarks where I had my, uh, the dedicated physics card overclocked using MSI afterburner to the maximum that I could get it to without having the, uh, the benchmarks crash and my computer fucking up and the temperatures going ridiculously high. This is with uh, while we're on the benchmark, the dedicated disc carbs again, 50 degrees, a full load while we're on the benchmark, so really good, but physics dedicated grass to it doesn't always go to full usage, it just does it enough to it just it doesn't go to full usage, so 50 degrees is really good. And I don't want to put it more than that because when it does go full load during the physics game, it's gonna to get to more higher temperatures. But to around 60 degrees, and if I went any higher than that, I wouldn't really feel safe by doing it. So, now for the scores with the overclocked physics dedicated graphs card. The score was 1907 points. That's a huge boost from the last one. And the FPS I got was 32 frames per second on average, with a minimum of 32 and a maximum of 33. So, there we go, we have a, a huge performance boost compared to the last one, which is one of the overclocking. Physics dedicated graphics card is just a must, I swear to god. The tests show it. If I could test more graphics cards, I would, but I don't have any more. Uh, except for one, but that's even worse than that 500 GT, and I don't think it has physics, so it's not really any point. But yes, please, for the love of god, if you're going to get a dedicated physics card, overclock it. The tests show that it's worth it, okay? So, is it worth it? You can see there that uh, before the overclock, uh, you wouldn't really think it was worth it. it. The advantage you got in physics benchmarks wasn't that much, it was a few frames per second. One, two maybe, if you pushed it. And then we actually tried overclocking it with MSI Afterburner. Now, a lot of people don't know their way around overclocking, and if you don't, I would not advise you do it. Although if you have a friend that can help you, I would advise you do it. Or if you look up on it a lot, especially looking up the specifics, like your exact graphics card, and what application you're using, and what case and coolant solutions you have, what benchmarks you're using, stuff like that, I would definitely advise you do it because I saw the benchmarks that uh, gain you got from overclocking was incredible. It was around five frames per second, which in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much, but when you're using extremely cheap components like that, the GT9500 and the GTS450, it, it really is worth it. So, if you're gonna overclock, would I advise you get one of these? If you can get one very cheaply, yes. It's probably not worth the 20, £20, £25 it is to buy one new. If you can get one used for about 15, maybe 20, uh, or even like if you've got a friend who wants to give you one. I got found this in my dad's suitcase, in my dad's suitcase full of computer parts, and he just said, yeah, do you want it? I was like, yeah, I can do something with this. Um, so yeah, if you can get one very cheap, it is definitely worth putting it in your computer. If you've got a low end graphics card, if you've got a high end graphics card, like I said, like a, a 670 or 780, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. I mean, putting this in and dedicating it to physics is probably going to hurt your performance if you've got a really good graphics card, but if you've got something in the GTX 660s, 650s, 
or uh, the AMD equivalent 7750s and 70s. Uh, it's definitely worth it. So yeah, this is. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you make some choices when it comes to buying parts for a computer. My name is Jake. Please like the video and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later.